Let's say a 60 kilogram person takes a bathroom scale to a high speed observation deck elevator in the skyscraper Taipei 101. He stands on the scale during his ride, and we want to find the scale's readings at different parts of his ride. On his trip up, Part A. The elevator first has to pick up speed with an average acceleration of 1.05 meters per second squared for 16 seconds. What does the scale read during this time? So we want to find the scale reading. Well, does the scale read just his weight? Not really. This bathroom scale reads how hard I push on it. So what do you think it reads? It reads the force between these two contact surfaces, how hard they push on each other. So what force would that be? It's normal force. So a scale like this reads normal force, while a scale like this reads uh, tension, not weight. So, if we are looking for the scales reading, we are looking for the normal force. Again, let's follow the problem solving procedures. First, we look at the direction of the acceleration. The elevator is going up and picking up speed, so the acceleration goes upward. And then we have to draw the force diagram. So I'm drawing this dot to represent the person. And of course, there's the non-contact force mg acting on the person. The person is 60 kilograms, so 60 times 10, that's giving me 600 newtons. The person is touching the scale, so you have a contact surface. A contact surface can give you normal force and friction. The normal force is a pushing force, so the scale pushes on the person upward. Normal force is perpendicular to the contact surface. Now the person does not have any tendency to slide. And of course he's not sliding either. So there is no friction. So normal force is the only force from this contact surface. And the person is not touching anything else. So this is our force diagram. No more forces. But wait. What about the cables that are attached to the elevator? Don't they exert tension on the person? Although they do pull on the elevator, the cables do not exert a force on the person because the cables do not touch the person. The cables pulling forces on the elevator does affect the normal force on the person, but the cables tension does not act on the person. We're done with the force diagram, so let's write the force equation. Net force equals to ma. Since the acceleration goes up, that must mean the upward force is bigger than the downward force. We would do the bigger side minus the smaller side. So the net force is the normal force minus the 600 newtons. I don't use uh, positive for the upward force and uh, negative for the downward force over here. I just uh, subtract because they work against each other. And then this is the amount of the net force. And that equals to M, 16 kilograms times the acceleration, 1.05. So this gives me 63. And that means uh, we'll get normal force, that is uh, 663 newtons. So the normal force is larger than the weight of the person. Because uh, in order to provide an upward acceleration, you have to have a net force that goes upward. Also, remember that you lean in a direction opposite to the direction of acceleration. Acceleration goes up, so you lean downward, and you feel like you're sinking into the floor, pushing down on the floor harder than usual. And how hard you push down on that floor or on the scale is the normal force. So the scale reads more than your weight. 
how hard you push down on the floor is also how heavy you feel you are. Something we call the apparent weight. So the normal force, the scales reading here is also the apparent weight. That's not the same as the real weight. The real weight is the m times g. It is the gravitational pull. The real weight does not change with acceleration. Now let's look at the part B. After the elevator reaches a record speed of 16.83 meters per second, that's 37.7 miles per hour for an elevator, it travels upward smoothly at this constant speed. What does the scale read during this time? which means that we're looking for the normal force again. Let's follow the problem-solving procedures again. First, the acceleration. Since the elevator is going up and traveling at a constant speed, which means the direction doesn't change, the speed doesn't change, the velocity is a constant. So the acceleration is zero. And then let's draw the force diagram. Now the person is still touching the same contact surface. So the force diagram is the same as before. The force diagram hasn't changed. It's just that acceleration now is zero. So we don't have to redraw a force diagram. It's the same one. Since acceleration is zero, net force is zero, that means the upward and downward forces, they must be equal. So the normal force is 600 newtons. This is the normal weight of the person because the elevator is traveling at a constant velocity. And we don't feel velocity. So if we're traveling at a constant velocity, everything feels normal. So it, the scale in this case reads the person's normal weight. Part C. Before the elevator reaches the indoor observatory, the elevator has to slow down to a stop. Suppose it decelerates at the same 1.05 meters per second square. What does the scale read? during this deceleration. What is the normal force? Again, we first find the direction of acceleration. The elevator is going up and slowing down. Going up means the velocity goes upward. Slowing down, that means acceleration has to be in the opposite direction compared to the velocity. So the acceleration must be downward. Again, the person is still touching the same thing. The force diagram still is the same. But acceleration is downward. So when you write the net force equals to ma, the net force has to be downward. That means the downward mg is bigger than the normal force now. So the net force is the difference between the two. So we do the bigger side minus the smaller side. So it's 600 newtons minus the normal force equals to m times a. Again, we only deal with the positive numbers. So this is the amount of net force. This is the amount for ma. So this time, the normal force is 537 newtons, which is less than the real weight of the person, which means the apparent weight of the person is less than his real weight. So the person feels lighter. He's not pushing down on the floor as hard. After a while, this guy is coming back down in the elevator. So he's going down now. Part D. The elevator has to first pick up speed. Suppose it accelerates at 1.05 meters per second squared again. What is the scales reading?
So this time, elevator is going down and speeding up. So the acceleration is a downward acceleration. Again, if you draw the force diagram, it will be the same force diagram. And uh, when you write the net force equals to ma, the downward force has to be bigger than the upward force. So the net worth, the so the net force is the bigger side minus the smaller side. It's 600 minus the normal force equals to m times a. And so the no normal force is uh, 537 newtons. Exactly the same as that. Remember, we feel acceleration. We don't feel velocity. So if uh, there's uh, the same acceleration, same downward, same amount of acceleration, it feels the same. So the apparent weight, how hard you push down the floor, is the same. It doesn't matter whether the elevator is going up or down because the acceleration is what we feel. We do not feel the velocity. Part E. The elevator goes down at constant 10 meters per second. What is the scales reading? If the elevator is going down at a constant speed, that means the velocity is a constant because the direction doesn't change. So the acceleration is zero, which means the normal force will be the same will be the same as the normal weight of the person, 600 newtons, same as that, same acceleration. Part F, the elevator has to slow down to a stop now. Suppose it decelerates at the same 1.05 meters per second squared. What is the normal force? If the elevator is going down and slowing down, that means the acceleration is in the opposite direction compared to the velocity. The velocity is going down, so the acceleration must be upward. Upward 1.05 acceleration, that will be the same as this part A, which means uh, the normal force has to be 663 newtons. Think of an experience you had riding in an elevator. Do you remember feeling your apparent weight change? I'm not taking you to an elevator, but I have this scale and the one kilogram weight I can use to show you this effect. Remember that this scale reads how hard the spring is pulled, the tension. When the one kilogram here is at rest, the acceleration is zero. The net force is zero, so the downward gravity 10 newtons equals to the upward tension. So the scale reads the 1 kilograms normal weight. I'm going to pull it upward and then lower it back. I want you to pay attention to the scales reading. Just like the elevator problem, when I pull it up, at first, it has to pick up speed so the acceleration goes up and the scale reads more than 10 newtons. Then I have to slow to a stop so the acceleration goes downward and the scale reads less than 10. Let's try this again. Then when I lower it, at first, I have to speed up downward. I have to speed downward. Acceleration points downward and the scale reads less than 10. Then I have to slow to a stop while traveling downward. The acceleration would point up and the scale's reading would be more than 10. Is that right? You can also try it with something heavy like this and feel the force. Anyway, the next time you have a chance to ride in an elevator, pay attention to how your apparent weight changes.